In this screencast, I'll show you how to add grenades to your game. Now, adding a grenade can seem like a, a bit of a challenge, but if you uh, storyboard it out or draw a picture out first, it'll make it much, much easier. So what I've done is I've drawn a picture of how grenades will work in this game. So here's the drawing that I drew to kind of explain or work through how throwing grenades are going to work in our game. First, we have our survivor who's going to throw the grenade. Then the grenade's going to be in the air for a while. Eventually the grenade's going to land on the ground and it's going to sit there just for a little bit. It's not going to explode as soon as it hits the ground. After a few seconds, then boom, our grenade blows up. So what I need to do is basically take these actions and organize them and put them in the right classes. So throwing the grenade is going to happen in the survivor class. The grenade being in the air is going to happen in the grenade class and we're going to use a timer. We don't want our grenade to always be moving, we just want it to move for a short while. The grenade sitting on the ground for a while, we're going to use the same timer in the grenade class to control that. When our grenade explodes, what we're basically going to do is we're going to have a timer run out, we're going to take away the grenade and add our explosion animation. Now that we've made a drawing or storyboarded out how a grenade is going to work in our game, let's start to add the code. So we need to make a grenade class, so let's go to actor and make a new subclass. We'll make a grenade class called grenade and then we'll set the image. Remember that class name should be capitalized. So we'll click OK. The very first step in our storyboard was that the survivor throws a grenade. So that code happens in the survivor. So what we'll do is we'll just make a new method called grenade. Public void grenade. Um, in my game, I think I'm going to have the survivor uh, throw a grenade when I press the space bar. So I'll use the keyboard. So I'm going to say if greenfoot.is key down and then the key I want to use maybe is the space bar. We'll say that. We'll say then what we're going to have happen is we're going to get the world. We're going to add an object. We're going to add a new grenade. This is the class name, so that's why that's capitalized. Then we put a comma here, and we're going to say at get x and at get y and a semicolon. So this right here is just going to put a grenade on the screen when we press spacebar at the same spot where the survivor is. So then up in our uh, act method we can call the grenade class. So we'll say grenade. Okay, if we press compile we have no errors and right now what we have going on is if I run the game and I press the spacebar a grenade shows up on the screen. We actually need our grenade to move now. So the second step in our drawing was that the grenade needs to move for a certain amount of time. That's going to happen in the grenade class. And we already said we're going to use a timer, so we can create that right away. So let's create a public integer called, I don't know, G timer, And that's going to equal zero right away. Now, what you want to do is you want to have the grenade move for a certain amount of time. You could create a new method for this, or you can just have it happen in the act. I'm just going to write mine right in the act, because I know this is going to be a small amount of code. So the very first thing I want to take care of is have the counter time counter count up. So I'm going to say G timer equals G timer plus 1. There's other ways I could write that. I could also write G timer plus plus, or G timer plus equals 1. So now our timer's counting up. So what we want to do is just add two if statements. We want to say if the, if the G timer is less than, and then you have to pick a number for how long you want your grenade to be in the air or how long you want it to be moving. So we're going to say something like 60. If the G timer is less than 60, then what we're going to have it do is we're going to have the grenade move. So we're just going to say move and then, I don't know, we'll use 5 for speed. Move 5. So now if we compile this already, what will happen is when we run this and we press spacebar, that grenade moves 50. Or it moves 5 for 60, time, or 60 clicks of G timer. Now we need to add the part where the, time, the grenade sits on the ground and then it explodes. Again, I've already added my explosion class. If you haven't done that, you might want to pause the video and do this. So then we'll go back to the grenade. And now we're going to say, if the G timer 
is greater than 80. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have it explode. So we're going to say get world dot add object. So we need to add an explosion. New explosion comma and we want it to happen where this grenade is. So we're going to say get x comma get y. Then we're going to get the world and we're going to remove an object and we're going to get rid of this grenade. So we're going to say remove object this. So now here's what's happening. Our timer's counting up. For 60 clicks of the timer our grenade is moving 5. That's the part where our grenade is getting thrown. Then it sits on the ground between 60 and 80 and nothing happens then. When the timer gets over 80, it's going to add a new object, an explosion, and it's going to get rid of the grenade. So we can press compile and let's see what happens here. Press run, press spacebar, our grenade goes across the screen and then it blows up. Now the grenade removed itself and the explosion removes itself also, just like the splat animation from the last screencast. However, we have a couple things we need to work on here. If I move around with my soldier and I press spacebar, the grenades work, but they always shoot to the right. Even if I'm facing left, they always shoot to the right. What we need to do is we need to pass the rotation of the survivor to the grenade. And you Actually, we've done this in the um, shooting uh, demo or the shooting the bullets part. So again, quickly we can go to the survivor and we can just use survivor rotation, which we made before, and we can pass that along in the constructor. So when we add a new grenade, we want to pass along survivor rotation. Now, when I compile this, we're going to get an error because we haven't added the constructor in the grenade. So let's go back to the grenade class, and we can make a grenade uh, constructor by just typing public, and then we have to type grenade exactly the way the class name was typed, so public grenade. Then in parentheses, we're going to pass an integer, so I'm going to type int rotation. And then what we just want to do is we want to take this rotation, this integer, and we just want to set the grenade's rotation to it. So we're going to say set rotation, and then we're going to use that integer rotation. Remember that the constructor only happens once, and that's why this works so well. So if we compile this, and compile our program, we should have no errors. Press run. Now that grenade should um, go in the direction that I'm pointing. If we really slow it down, or if you have noticed that I'm actually throwing about three grenades at once, um, so what we would need to do is go into our survivor class and quickly add a double check. Um, I like to use booleans for double checks. So up top I'm going to create a public uh, boolean called grenade check and we'll make that equal to false. And so that we can only throw one grenade at a time, I'm going to change my if statement down here. So if I'm pressing spacebar and, so I need to put two and signs, and grenade check is equal to false. Now if I press the spacebar and the boolean is false, I'll throw a grenade. To make sure I don't throw two grenades, I'm going to make grenade check equal true after I throw one. And then to turn the grenades back on or to let me throw another grenade, I'm just going to add another else, uh, another if statement. I'm going to say if, and then I'm going to put an exclamation point, greenfoot.is key down, space, and grenade check is equal to true. I'm going to just turn grenade check back to false. So what this double check does is if I'm if I press spacebar and grenade check is false, I'm going to add a grenade, but I'm going to make that boolean true. Then an exclamation point in front of things means not. So if I'm not pressing down space and grenade check equals true, set grenade check back to false. So just we'll go back out, check it one more time, press run, and now if I press the spacebar, only one grenade comes out. In fact, if I hold down the spacebar, nothing happens until I let go of it. The last step of this is we actually need to make our zombies die from the um, grenades. Now this is something that's just a little bit different is 
Um, our zombie's not going to die when the grenade hits him. Our zombie's going to die when the explosion hits the zombie. So to do that, we'll just go to the zombie class. And in our, we already have a die method in there. And it, right now you can see it looks for bullets. We want to make our zombie also look for um, explosion. So we'll say actor explosion equals get one intersecting object. And then we're going to look for the explosion class. And then we're going to say if the explosion is not null, we'll get the world and we'll actually probably use this exact code but we will get rid of the ex uh, we will not get rid of the explosion we'll let the explosion get rid of itself and then we will add a new object a new splat because that's what ha happens when a zombie dies and then we'll remove the object this now if I compile this here and we put a couple zombies on the screen we're gonna have a problem if I press run and I shoot a zombie we're gonna get a terminal error again the actor's not in the world so we attempted to do something when that zombie disappeared it's in the die method so we'll click here and we'll look at it you can see right here I got rid of the zombie I killed him here he can't do anything after I kill him so we can just fix this with some reordering we need remove object this to be the last thing that happens or we need this to become an else if so for that to happen we can take this actor and we can actually look for that actor up here and then we want either the bullet or the explosion to kill the zombie so we can add this and make this into an else if. See how that gray box goes around both pieces of code? That way we will either remove the object here or here and we won't get that terminal error. So if we compile this and we'll drop a couple zombies on the screen and we'll kill them both ways, add a zombie down here and a zombie down here. So we'll press run. I'll throw a grenade at this zombie and I'll shoot that zombie. And that's how you can add grenades and explosions to your zombie game.